you got people who live on farms and ranches that are an hour or more from the nearest gas station. They have to drive when they need gas for two hours round trip or more just to get fuel. But in an electric truck, they can charge at home all the time. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. Time today in studio with Mike Herzog. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> Doing great. You know, we, we were talking about something. It's funny. A lot of people think EVs are only for people who are running around commuting in town. And one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is, well, we're, we're out in Omaha, but Omaha is a city, if you want to call it that. We're, you know, we're not as big as big cities, but we're not a village either. But a lot of Nebraska is pretty rural. And when you start going a little further west into Wyoming and Utah, you've got people who live on farms and ranches that are an hour or more from the nearest gas station. You, you see signs on the interstate that say, hey, get gas, last chance to get gas for the next 120 miles. I mean, you could be living a long ways. And what we see is we see these big F-250 pickup trucks that have an extra gas tank sitting in the bed of the truck because they have to go you know, drive when they need gas for two hours round trip or more just to get fuel. And What's funny is they wouldn't consider an electric vehicle, but in an electric truck, they can charge at home all the time. And it's a strange way that people think, because if I were a farmer and I had an electric F-150, uh, I could be plugging it in whenever I need to. I could run it all around town and out in the country where I live. Never have to worry about that stupid trip, you know, every week or so to go buy gas. Yeah, the the, the mileage and range on those, I mean, it fits your needs and, and what you're doing. And, and if, you know, the, the towing capability, you're not going that far necessarily, like it, it all works out. It's, it's interesting because I'll, when, when you look at this from a pure financial, you know, economic standpoint is... Do I make money? Do I save money? How do all of these things work? Like just like you said, we we factor a lot of that in for metro considerations. You know, there's not space. I only have so much room for solar. I only have so so much space to put this in. What's my daily commute look like? You know, how how am I going to crunch that out? Well, a lot of those factors start to turn over when you get rural spaces, um, where you talk about reliability of power and charging and everything like that. No, it's not great in rural areas um, just because the exposure in miles and miles of line and aging facilities and X, Y, Z, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you have space for renewables. You have space for diesel generation. You have space for all of these things out there that are cheap and plentiful and you can get over that resiliency hurdle. And all of a sudden that makes economic sense. Then charging a battery makes economic sense in these spaces. So a lot of these metrics and equations we've put on, does should we be incorporating these more? Where's that tip over point for a business? It, it works better in some of these applications. Definitely. Well, I suspect if I were that rancher, my argument would be that I have to go to the grocery store in that town. But at the same time, that's the EV argument about owning one because all of the superchargers are located at grocery stores or most of them, at least the ones for Tesla. They put them all at grocery stores. So, I mean, it, it's it's simple. It's like, well, you go charge when you go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's a pretty simple concept, but it's exactly the same thing. And they're out there in the wilderness and they've been doing this for, you know, as long as there's been cars. And it, it's just kind of a funny reversal of the technology. Because they would be better suited to be electric. I don't want to don't want to overgeneralize, but you know, farmers and ranchers are are people that that value their independence and and what they do, and they want to own and create and manage what they do. Uh, they're very very shrewd business people and and understand the value of money and payback periods and make the decisions on on their operations based off of that. So when you start start to put those things together, it's like you can generate your own power. I'm, I'm surprised it's just not more appealing out there. You you have complete control. You can put these things together. You you own it. You operate it. You decide when it turns on and off, when you charge, how you charge, you know, all of those things. So I think it's maybe it just hasn't penetrated, you know, out there yet and thinking about it. And, you know, some of these some of these dots haven't been connected. But I, I agree with you. It's just one of those. You don't think about it a lot. But when you take a step back and actually do and and, and look at the whole picture that I think that kind of makes sense. 
I, I'm just saying because of what those farmers are doing, you know, which people are resistant to is exactly kind of the argument of why, you know, now when I say this for EV people, this should be EV people that live in apartments and don't have access to charging at home, right? It, it, it's exactly the same argument. You have the same issue that now, of course, I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be out there living remotely like all, all of these farmers, maybe at a different time. I could see living, you know, outside of town on a few acres. Okay. I, I, I can see that, but I really don't want to be hours and hours from civilization and all that. But, you know, that, that's a different story. Hi, I'm David with EV World News. If you like this video, then please press the like button. If you like the content and would like to see more videos on electric vehicles, then please hit the subscribe button. If you have some feedback for us, please let us know in the comments. Have a great day.